Yeah, you already know what I'm going to say. Bandai Movie Monster Series Kiryu 2002. The very first Kiryu Movie Monster Series figure since the release of the original figure. 20, 20 years, years ago. ago. Was, Was the wait the worth, worth it? it? Is Kiryu's star-studded return to the Movie Monster Series a welcomed one? Eh. Eh. eh I'm gonna be honest with you guys. It ain't that great, but for a budget Kiryu release? Sure, I guess. Uh. So right up front, I know what you're all going to ask, and I'm going to answer your question now. Is this figure a blown up version of Candy Kiryu over here? The answer, surprisingly enough, no, it is not. These are two entirely different molds, both for their articulation and their size, and I'll showcase why right now fairly quickly. We've got a review to do. First up, dorsal fins. Look at those profile shots. Can you see the difference, Mr. Krabs? Candy Kiryu's mold was obviously made to accommodate for that of a waist swivel, and while the original Movie Monster series was able to accomplish that with a full row of dorsal fins and no dent, this lovely gentleman did not. Another difference between the two molds is going to be, obviously, the tails. This guy rests at a curve, this guy rests at a curve, a bump, and then a curve down. But the final proving part to my point here is going to be in the titties. As you can see, Candy Kiryu over here, he got a titty stamp. This guy, do not. Plus, this Kiryu's mouth is actually open. This one's is not. Okay, I think we're done here. I've proven my point, all right? This is a whole new mold. Moving on. Bandai Movie Monster Series Mecha Godzilla 2002, Godzilla 2022. Yes, there's a giant crease on the front. I was not happy about that DHL. <laughs> on the back of the tag, we get Godzilla X Mecha Godzilla Bandai Movie Monster Series Bandai Namco. <laughs> As Squeamily D, you've heard the same thing from me. Time to pack the Goji Tuna into his tin can. Now let's move on over into paint and detail. And believe me, paint is going to be super duper quick. Wonder why. From the moment that this figure was officially revealed, I really did enjoy the lighter blue on this guy. Yes, the original version and even the Candy Kiryu version had a much darker, more Royal Navy-ish blue. This guy decided to go brighter, and honestly, I think this is one of the figure's saving graces. Not its only one, believe it or not. More on that later. But it really does help the figure pop, especially on a shelf full of Movie Monster series figures. Be it in your own collection or even if you're figure shopping out there in Japan. This guy stands out, and I can't deny that. And the brighter blue and the brighter blue really do help the detail pop quite a bit, yes. Granted, some of the details from the original figure on this one are a little more on the muted side, but it's really nothing too crazy. And I do enjoy the detail on the forearm mounted laser cannons but it does get a little gaudy in some areas mostly back here but that's the back of the figure you're never going to be looking at the back of the figure <laughs> and since this guy really doesn't feature too much paint other than the blues yellows and reds the barrels of the laser cannons kind of do get lost in kiryu's hand i mean from a distance you can definitely tell making my opinion a little on the moot side but for the most part yeah i feel like it could have used a little bit more but what else is new from shin rob jiro I'm a one-trick pony. I complain about vinyl toys made by Bandai specifically for children. I've built my empire on a fountain of blood. Blood of children. The eyeballs on old Kiryu over here are nice and yellow and properly painted. And the bloody tear streaks are there. I'm glad they're there, even if they do look like they were painted on with a red ink sharpie. And do you know what I have to say about this figure in terms of paint? For everything that is painted, solid star. Really, I like the hues of blue that much that I'm willing to give the paint a solid star. But everything else gets a solid X. Details. Raise your hand if you're surprised because the detail on Kiryu is absolutely sublime. Sure, it might not be fitted with the paint that would have made this a superb figure, but I do gotta give Bandai credit where it is due. This guy is detailed up like a dream. Sure, a lot of it isn't too much different from SOS Kiryu, but there's just enough different about it that really sends the message home. Bandai cheapened out on the paint, but they didn't cheapen out on the mold. 
The bottom of the tail is as magnificent as it's ever been, and I'm sure the feet are good. Not picking it up, right? Don't make a big deal out of it. Don't make a big deal out of it. Don't make a big deal out of it. It's the bottom of the feet. They don't matter. They don't matter. They don't matter. They don't matter. At least the bottom of Kiryu's toes are properly detailed, I'd say. Yeah. And then moving throughout the legs into Kiryu's thighs and crotch pit tummy, the whole nine yards. The detail as to be expected from Bandai. It's solid star worthy, bro. And I really do love that you can see the hatches on the sides of Kiryu's titties. And even over here as well. Seriously, this detail job is fantastic. Were those even present on the original? Yes, of course they were. Come on now, Rob. Don't question Bandai of yore. I know I already talked about paint, but I need to talk about it a tiny bit more here. Because since Kiryu's backpack is a lighter blue, you can actually see the details on his his back back a little bit better. Now granted, you can see the details just fine on the original one, possibly under some better lighting and such, but here it's a lot easier on the eyes. You really don't need to squint too much to get a good look. It's like that on the front over here, and it's like that even over here on the sides of the guns and stuff. Well, the tops of the sides of the guns, I should say. Yet again, that blue paint coming in clutch, bro. And before I get into my comparison to Palooza, let's just go over articulation first, because it's going to be really, really quick. Heavily underpainted Kiryu's head can move from side... Uh, two side like so it can definitely go all the way around but i'm not going to risk scratching off any of this magnificent blue paint bro arms can go well, all the way around both sides yes nothing at the waist nothing in the legs whatsoever but we will get the full rotation at the base of the tail Solid star. Now let's compare him to other things. Now if you see anybody complaining about this figure calling it soulless, my ass included, let me show you the reason why we are saying that. 8-inch movie monster series Kiryu from 2002. Honestly, it's such a stark contrast I can almost get whiplash just from looking at this thing. It's upsetting. I'll be the first to say that. It's absolutely upsetting that Bandai are kind of going backwards in terms of painting their figures and such. As I try to say on a somewhat regular basis, screen accuracy really doesn't matter to me as long as it actually looks like the monster on screen. But I will say that this Kiryu could have used a little bit more and I'm a little confused as to why he doesn't have more. The molds on these two figures are very much different. I think that is obvious because there are details on this guy that aren't present on this one. Tiny minute details that I'm not going to get into. I'm sorry. It really just doesn't matter if one has dots on the top of his head and the other one doesn't. See? Dots and strides. No dots, some strides. Okay, not as bad as I thought. So instead of doing the obvious thing and comparing this thing to a 20-year-old Bandai figure, let's compare him to something a little bit more recent, huh? Huh? Holy Italian-owned Subway, Batman. This thing came out in 2016, and this thing came out in 2020. This was already the bare minimum, because he's he's half-painted. He's not fully painted, but damn, man. Bandai kind of regressing, didn't they? Like, it's kind of wild how a 2016 figure versus a 2022 figure has more paint. Now I get it. Bandai, you're a big corporate business. You want the figures to look somewhat recognizable for kids because you do make these for kids. You don't care if they're accurate or not. But even this, this right here. Even as a Bandai fanboy, I can't think up a better or even a good, I should say, excuse for this. This is type ridiculous, dog. <laughs> uh, now, of course, these two are going to have different sets of details because they're based on two different suits. Yes, between 2002 and 2003, the Kiryu design was reworked. I don't know if they started from scratch and made a whole new suit or just modified the original, but changes were obviously made. And one of the reasons why I am absolutely not tossing this thing into the volcano is simply because you can tell and it's very very obvious can you all see what it is no all right let's bring in somebody a little bit more familiar with this design that being the heavily armed kiryu figure can you tell now is it obvious yet all right everybody prepare yourselves because even i wasn't expecting this oh he's <laughs> 
Yeah, at first I thought I was going quite crazy, but no, Kiryu 2002 is definitely thicker. You can see it in the waist, you can see it in the thighs, you can see it in the cockpit even. This is something, yes, I wasn't expecting, but it's something that was present between the two different suits as well. 2003 Kiryu was slimmed up from 2002 Kiryu. And of course, Toho could absolutely justify that by saying, uh, yeah, he got messed up in the last movie, so he got some modifications. Slimmer waist, slimmer thighs. Hell, I think he might even have slimmer eyes. That's one of the things they changed between the suits, right? I think so. I'm not crazy. I was paying attention. Thank you, Wikizilla. But another major difference between these two will actually be in the size. Nothing crazy, though. 2022 Kiryu is going to be a little bit taller than 2003 Kiryu, and I think this is also the representation of something that happened between the two suits as well. Most of this guy's height, I do believe, is coming from his neck. Just the fact that something like that is present in a vinyl figure from Bandai is kinda nuts. I like it. The changes are obvious, the paint and lack thereof it are obvious. These are two different figures, but I'm really enjoying the fact that this guy is thicker in the thighs. Not because I have a robot fetish or something. We're not starting up another one of those. But just because it's nice to see that Bandai cared at least that much. <laughs> sure, it would have been nicer if it was all fully painted, but the thought is there, I guess. They could have easily kept the lower half of this figure, just redid everything from the waist up, and it would have been simple. But they didn't. This guy is going to have some slimmer wiring on the fronts of his ankles. All this guys are definitely going to be a lot thicker. I'm pretty sure all of this remains the same between the two figures. Yeah, a little bit. The wiring's a bit different on this figure as compared to the other one. Yeah, I feel like this wire is a little bit more visible on this guy than on the other one. But anyway, small shin, big shin, medium shin. Yeah, this isn't the star-studded return of Kiryu to the movie monster series, but it could have been a lot worse. And honestly, I was expecting a lot worse, but the vibrant blue paint, the obvious changes in the mold and everything, some things that I wasn't expecting Bandai to even go through with, I gotta give him credit where it's due, you know? Yes, I will always be preaching to the heavens that I want Bandai to go back to the way they were in the early 2000s, but I'm kind of just coming to terms with the fact that that's just not going to happen. We're going to get figures that absolutely go over the criterion that we're used to, and we're going to get ones that might actually dip below the criteria that we're used to. It's unfortunate, of course, but I don't know, man. I don't outwardly hate this thing. In fact, I'd go as far to say that this is probably the perfect budget Kiryu figure for vinyl collectors to pick up. Not everybody is a moron like me, a moron with money that bought two 8-inch Bandai Movie Monster Series Kiryu figures that definitely put a bit of a dent in my wallet right before Godzilla Day, of course. So I'm kind of glad this exists for you out there who don't have an original but want to cure you and don't want to spend a lot of money. While he does somewhat teeter on the stank of that 2019 Gojira re-release, I would definitely say this guy turned out a lot better than that thing, because that thing's just extra point friggin' lazy. Yeah, I'm still bummed about it. Give me a break. But any hoodles, that's enough out of me. This video's going on longer than it really should. I have been Shinrob Jira. I do so hope you all enjoyed. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my social media, maybe even my Patreon if you like the video that much. One dollar nets you a whole bunch of stuff like early content, early pictures, and I've got more stuff in the works. And when next we meet, which will be tomorrow night, we will be taking a look at the very first Evangelion figures to ever be made under the Movie Monster series tag. And you know what? I'm impressed with these things too. Not by much, but, you know, they're pretty good.